Hi guys, Alec Pierce, Scuba Tech Tips, or as Kevin calls me, the talent. <laughs> That's quite a joke. That was his idea. It wasn't mine. Trust me, I'm no talent. Ask my wife. Uh, but anyway, um, this is a, a short uh, uh, LDS Pro, Local Dive Shop Pro Tip. That's what we call these. We've done, we've done a few of these. And these may be of value to uh, uh, dive store owners. Operators, managers, clerks, anybody in the diving industry, there may be something in here for you. I mean, if you don't, if you're not interested in hearing it, just turn it off. But uh, maybe there's some little tip in here that might help you in your business. Help you to get customers, to keep customers, to make more money, make your job easier. And they're all bonuses, right? There's a win, win, win. But it's entirely up to you. First of all, let me reiterate once again why I'm doing this. Well, because I was almost 50 years in the scuba business. I first started where I started diving in 58, but I started working in a dive store in 1969, Underwater World in Scarborough, big dive store. Yeah, as, as dive stores go, Scarborough is part of Toronto, big dive store, very, very busy. And I started working there as a, a dumb little clerk. I was just a diver at the time, became an instructor very quickly. It was easy in those days, and uh, but I learned a lot. I want to mention today about the service and rental area. Okay, because this is a really big, it's an important part of the scuba diving facility. The service area where you repair customers, I'll talk about customers' equipment, obviously your own too, but customers where you repair customers' equipment, you make a lot of money. There were certain times, certain economic times over all those years, 50 years, that, 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 uh, that sales were not very good, travel was not very good, and courses were okay. But we made a lot of money in the service department. Service department can be very, very profitable for you. So you need to have a good service department. What makes a good, so I'm going to share what makes a good service department. And then the rental room as well. Rental rooms are very important because your customers come into the rental room. They see the equipment they're going to be using. They see how it's treated, how it's displayed, how it fits, and they ask. So these, these are good topics. Service area, first of all. Number one, there's a number of points here, and these are not necessary in any particular order. Number one, I see all the time dive stores and they service their regulators on the front bench or close to the front bench or on a shelf where customers that come in can see what the service man is doing. My opinion, no, shouldn't happen. Not that you're hiding anything, but the service area is the service area. The service area is where you take a customer's regulator and you take it back to the service area where you have all the tools and all the supplies and you can work in quiet with the manuals and the books that you need. It's all done on discs or on computer now, but whatever. All that. And you quietly and carefully take that customer's regulator, service it properly, bag it, call the customer, collect your money, and off he goes. That does not belong out in the front area. Customers should not see what you're doing. There are other practical reasons why they should not watch what you're doing either. That's the main reason. It needs to be a quiet, well-organized, well-supplied area away from the hubbub of the dive store itself. Whether you do it after hours, if you're a one-man operation, or you have other staff out front, doesn't matter. You go back, you service the equipment. That's the number one. Secondly, it needs to be clean. It needs to be well organized. Again, I go into dive stores once in a long time, and I see that the dive store owner has a little table somewhere, and he's a, a, a red steel toolbox that he picked up for $11 at Home Depot, and all of his tools are in that. And when he needs a tool, he goes in and he scrabbles around. Oh, yeah, screwdriver. Oh, that's got a bent tip. Oh, there's a better one. No. No, you need to have quality tools. You need to have special tools if required. There are some special tools that you have to have. There's no way around it. I'm sorry, a pipe wrench doesn't work. You know, yeah, yeah. and the tools need to be clean. Well, look here, look, look here. This, this is a, a, a popular dive store in the Toronto area, dive stores in Whitby. Look at here. Anything that uh, Marty, Marty is the name of the service center here. He's got his, his uh, gauges here for air and, and, and the regulator for, for checking on the, the breathing resistance. And, and, the, and the, he's got his, his um, what's this called, ultrasonic cleaner. He's got a, a good solid vice with a, a test tank on it to, for, for, for regulators. He's got a, a workbench, a good solid workbench with a rubber pad on it. I tell you. <laughs> I take something of mine into a service center, scuba regulator or anything else, and it comes back scratched. 
with scratches or bangs it didn't have before, I'm not going to be happy. There's a rubber pad on here. It's a special tool. There's all the different wrenches he might need. Over here, he's got his drawers with all a lot of the, the supplies are all numbered. Uh, special crow's foot wrenches over here, books that he needs, your computer's ready to go because, as I say, service is on disk. So there is a small, granted it's small, this is only six feet long, a small but very, very nice, in my opinion, service center. Clean, well organized. If he knows that he needs a 9 16 wrench, he reaches out and he picks up a 9 16 wrench like that. It's clean, he does what he has to do, and he puts it right back. Just like that. I hope that's the right place. But anyway, <laughs> you see what I mean. And if by some chance a customer, maybe it's one of your instructors, a dive master, who normally might have access to this area, or a customer for some reason, you invite him to come back, he comes back and he takes a look and says, oh, wow, it's not ever nice, Marty. Boy, look at the tools. Ooh, boy. The tools are not a big deal, but nice. Well lit as well, sure. Particularly as you get older and your eyes, like Kevin, your eyes start to fade on you. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. Uh, <laughs> I have other things fading on me. This is a nice service area. And that's what you need to have. So clean, well lit, and away from the public view. All your parts, everything else that you need, all organized. And nobody else should really be in there. You know, if you are the designated service person, maybe in many cases in smaller dive centers, the only service person, you should be the only person in the service area. Why would somebody else come in? You, know, you don't know what they're doing, you're moving your tools, picking up bits and pieces, picking up over and no, no. So try to keep it uh, uh, small and keep it well controlled too. Good service area. Now, we're going to go and take a look at the rental area, and I'll give you some pointers in there as well. Let's go and look at the rental area. Okay, come on. Okay, guys, now you can see that this is a clean, well-organized rental area, just like the service area we looked at a few minutes ago. This is a rental area. What's special about it? Nothing. It's just clean, really well organized, easy for the staff, easy to rent equipment, get it in and out of here. You don't want to waste time. You know, rental can be a big producer of income as well, but you don't want it taking up all of your time. You should be able to quickly and easily look at the diver and say, oh, you're medium large and you need the dub dub and give it to them. Hey, that's fantastic. You can go to the cash register now, and uh, and uh, Susie will be out there and tote all this up for you. You have a great dive. We'll see you on Monday. That's what it should be like. You don't have hours and hours. So what do they got here? Well, you want you want to you want you need a medium hood. There they go. Mark medium hoods in there, and uh, you're you're going to need extra large gloves. Boy, you got to get big hands on you. There's the extra large gloves in there. You need a mat. You don't have your own personal gear. That's all right. Well, no, we got mass snorkels and fins here. It's only a couple of bucks to rent them, so that's okay. So we have mass and snorkels and fins. That's okay. All right, you're all set there. Now you're going to need a scuba tank. Yeah, trust me, you're going to need a scuba tank. So here's our scuba tanks. We have about nine. 90 scuba tanks in here, and they're all numbered, and these are all filled. I know they're filled because they're capped, okay? So I can easily take one of these tanks out of here, set it over there safely, ready for the guy. Okay, you need a scuba tank. Now you'll need a, you're going to need a regulator for your scuba tank. Yeah, oh, well, it makes diving so much easier. I don't see the regulators. Oh, they're here. Look. Look at all the regulators. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what's nice is... They're in bags. I go into a lot of dive stores. You know, visit old friends and old people and, and, and new dive stores. And, and I see the regulars hanging on a hook. <laughs> They've driven a big, uh, an eight inch nail into the wall and they have six regulators hanging on it. Hey, it works. They're stored, right? They're hanging up, right? Number one, it's not good for the regulators. And number two, perfectly frank, it looks like hell. So, much nicer like this. You got regulator number 14 is in bag number 14. So you know it's all set to go. It's protected, it's padded, and it's all set to go. There is your regulator. Put that with the tank. Now, let me just see. You are 150 pounds. So with the wetsuit on, you're going to be a medium large. I think we'll go for medium large buoyancy compensator. And the BCs are right here. Lift comes off, down it comes. This is all, uh, this, uh, 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 the BCs here. Uh, at this dive store, at this dive store, uh, dive stores, they're on rollers, like bicycle pulleys. So you can take the cord, drop them down, and take out the one in each. Put the BC on, make sure it fits, you're all set to go. Oh, weights! Oh, that's right, you need weights. Right there. 
a cup of bag of weights. Now, I don't know exactly how they had these organized, uh, but I assume that most of these weight bags are the same weight, the number of weights that a diver would commonly need to dive here in Ontario in a seven millimeter suit. And then the diver with the instructor or on his own, if he's diving with a buddy, can decide how many weights out of that bag he needs to use. They would normally, in most dive stores, would have uh, more weights in the bag than you necessarily need. Some divers need more. Some divers need 24 pounds of weight, and some divers need 16 pounds of weight. They can sort that out. But I imagine each of these bags is the same. Easy for organization. Every bag has exactly the same in it. The divers use what they know from their diving experience or from the instructor what they need. But there they are. Nice and neat bag. Weight belts, buckles, they're not falling all over and they're not hurting your hand. And then, of course, you need a wetsuit. Here's a wetsuit. And the wetsuits are all lined up by size, ready to go, and they're on roller racks for a couple of the reasons. Yeah. They can actually roll these right out the door. See the garage door? They can roll them right out the door and the sunshine, let them dry, get completely aired out so they're brand new and fresh for the next diver. Roll them right on back in and they can move them around here in the rent room. So anyway, the exact details are not critical. What is critical? Organized, yes. Easy to reach everything. Easy to find the right sizes. So, as I say, the wetsuits are organized by size. You don't have to go through every wetsuit on the rack in order to find the extra large. BCs, the same thing. Small BCs all the way up to extra large. Tanks are all the same. Regulators complete with computers and safe seconds are all the same. Mass fins and snorkels. And it's neat and clean. And you know something else? It doesn't smell. <laughs> yeah, I've been in a few uh, rental rooms uh, where, where I went in, took a quick look around and left right away. So whatever you do, ventilate or, or, get, or get some kind of air freshener and make sure that your rental room is a pleasant place to go. Looks nice, looks organized, looks professional, and it's pleasant. Anyway, those are some tips, guys. Service and rental. Very important. They can be a large, large part of your income if you work it right. Anyway, I hope there's something in there for you. And we'll talk to you soon again, Alec Pierce. Pro Tech Tips. LDS Pro Tech Tips. What do we call this? Okay. <laughs> See ya.